This is the long version of Jen's story. We discuss a whole host of topics. All right, this is Joseph of Borg. I am here with Jen today. Uh, she's going to share a story with me, and I really appreciate you coming on to share it. So why don't you just introduce yourself, and if you want to tell your story, maybe some background as to why you got it. we're looking at getting an implant. And I'll I think Jen was incredibly brave to share so openly. If you agree, please hit the thumbs up or type thanks, Jen, in the comments. Um, I guess uh, I was a, an employee for the post office for many years, about 16 years. I did a lot of uh, heavy lifting, uh, driving and caring, and really pretty much I had um, osteoarthritis in my shoulders pretty early on in my 30s. Um, the surgeon said, it, you know, that's what you're going to get from, you know, repetitive labor, heavy lifting and stuff. So I've actually had four shoulder surgeries, one on one side, three on the other. And then it just kind of progressed through my body the longer I was there. And uh, I guess it was about 2013. I went off work on holidays and honestly, my body was just such a mess. My back, my hip, my shoulders. I thought, you know, I really can't go on. So I kind of thought, you know, some time off work, my back would be better. I'd you know, get my shoulder fixed and I'm good to go. But um, that didn't happen. Um, actually, my back ended up getting worse and um, I started getting really bad sciatic pain. So that's really kind of where I've been and it's gone on from there. I mean, I have a few issues, uh, rotoscoliosis, degenerative disc disease, bulging discs, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I went through all the, the therapies, uh, for, you know, physio, chiropractor, massage, you name it. I went to um, a pain clinic. They were going to do injections in my back and, and burn the nerves. Uh, I had a really terrible experience with that um and then i didn't want to try it again so i don't I blame you there <laughs> uh, I, just to interject i had the radio frequency ablation when they burned the nerves and i had some injections too and number one for me the radio frequency ablations were lasting maybe six months and there were, and then my insurance required two rounds of nerve blocks as a diagnostic each time never mind the fact that it worked the first time right you know so, so i had to schedule those and then get the burn and get the insurance approval and when i went down when when the pain came back i was down i couldn't work so there was no way i could be off work for you know anywhere from two to six weeks while they got their shit together right you know twice a well, year and then I had a really, a really bizarre experience. And I, I don't talk about it too much because it's one of those things that I don't, I don't believe in scaring people unnecessarily. Right. And let's face it, we know, all know there are some people uh, that seem to really take pleasure in, you know, oh, my God, that shit's poison. Or, you know, they're just so over dramatic and just – but uh, I don't know if you remember. It was all over the news back in 2012, the New England Compounding Center uh, had – distributed some uh, tainted steroids they were infected with black mold oh and it no. was on the news i didn't know that they, yeah it was on the news and they got sued out of existence so that's why i don't really bring it up it's not going to happen to somebody else but it was on the news daily you know people were getting meningitis or encephalitis whichever one it is encephalitis meningitis from because they had had black mold literally injected into their epidural space or oh, spinal wow. column so I, I saw it on the news, and they were talking about the time that they had it done. And I told my wife, God, I'm so glad I was months outside of that. And then one day I come home, and there's a letter in the mail from the CDC. Uh oh And told me I'd been in the, one of the batches because they kept pushing the dates out. And, I mean, there were literally people dying by the day. Wow. There were like, there were like 30 people, I think, How that ended up dying. Oh, my God. So I go in and I get a spinal, a spinal tap, and they were having trouble getting enough fluid. Go figure with all my issues. And they had me on the table for about 45 minutes. I ended up with like a tombstone shaped. They actually tilted the table to try and get the fluid. They sent it out, and they said uh, my test came back inconclusive because it was supposed to be like three to five days. And they right. had to incubate it for 45 days to find out. Oh boy! So you're just yeah. So you're I was just yeah. and and not that it makes me more susceptible, but I had seen this type of in, this type right. of illness up front, up close and personal. Because when I was in my early twenties, my mom had encephalitis and meningitis viral, and she was in a coma nineteen days. So I was 
I had seen it up close and I was right. terrified. Turns out I had an, uh, probably the beginnings of an ear in, of a potential ear infection and that's what flagged my sample. Okay. But yeah, it, but you know, you know it, you're tormented for over a month now. Oh, at, uh, at the 45, you know. yeah, at 45 days, I called them and said, hey, what's going on? And they said, oh, yeah, you no, you're in the clear. I'm like, oh, you couldn't have called me, sent me a letter, <laughs> uh, you know, excuse my language, but a fucking carrier pigeon, something. Yeah. You know, so don't leave me hanging on something like this. Yeah, I went into work today. I got the letter in tears. I was so scared and terrified well, and i showed the letter to my boss people are dying you you know like yeah exactly and i told her i said look uh my boss i, I told her i said look i i know I'm, I'm a mess and i don't mean to put this on you but i wanted for you to see me i'm in no condition to work because i couldn't bring myself to just go and say yeah i got a warning letter from the cdc and i can't come into work you, you know what i mean it just didn't sound right. credible right. i wanted her to see that i was having a, a, a meltdown so, because but people can't relate. Exactly, and, and you, you know, them, no, but and there's no shame like, in my game, you know. Pain, right? You exactly. People, I'm in pain, but it means nothing if they don't understand it. Yeah, so I can relate. So, and that's why I went on to get a spinal cord stimulator, not to have you know interrupted your story, but yeah, so I can relate. The RFAs, they're you know, well, you know, a lot of needle traffic too. A um. A couple people I know had had them done and had success. Um, you know, my one girlfriend said her, her brother-in-law goes once a year and it lasts for nine months to a year. You know, he's good. But I mean, I had a really horrible experience and they, you know, it just, it put me off. So I had went to see a back surgeon and he said, um, no, no, uh, you should come. I do a clinic and, you know, I do the nerve blocks. And so he told me initially you go every week and then it kind you kind of weed off it it's supposed to interact and kind of how he explained it was jolt your body set your body back to um you know the pain reaching your brain and you know it'll take a bit but what he told me was six to eight months um but i went for two years every week and although it did I have to be honest, helped me with my sciatic pain a lot because at one point I couldn't drive a few kilometers without wanting to cut my leg off. So I still couldn't drive anywhere over 30 minutes. Um, and then when I, you know, couldn't go, I would feel it. So I kept on going, but basically, um, you know, for over three years, it was going every other week and it was really only helping my sciatic. Um, nothing with my, my back. Um, and then I started getting nerve pain down my thighs and he said well you know the MRI doesn't show anything doesn't show any nerve impingement and I said well look something's going on because I wouldn't have this nerve pain if and I knew knew there had to be something there they did two MRIs over a couple of years and then I just had one recently this year where it showed that yeah in fact um four of the locations were touching the nerve so it's like you go through this process where you're suffering and I understand on, on their side surgeon, he says to me, look, I just can't open you up and operate because the MRI doesn't show anything. Right. You know? Like I just can't open up and look around. But at the same time, it's like, you're being told, look, there's nothing wrong with you. We didn't know mm -hmm. there's nothing there. Yeah. You know? And it took so many years later and then eventually it shows up and I was like, yeah, like, all those levels, you know, relate to, okay, L3, L4 is this, the pain down the front, pain here. It all matched up, you know. So there's that kind of overshadowing thing you feel like almost you're not believable. Yeah. Because they want some hard evidence. And it's like, well, why can't I just feel that way and you believe? So aside from huh. he said they couldn't do, um, you know, any surgery, I decided I wanted to go back and try the where they burn the nerves, the ablation or whatever. Yeah. Uh, again, even though it had a horrible experience, that's what happens when you're so desperate. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to try it. I'll just try it again. So I went back and no, it, it just didn't work for me. So, let me let me ask you a quick question, and, and just for the viewers' knowledge, and I'm not trying to pick on Canada in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> I'm from Minnesota, so I, I, I love you guys up there. But uh, do you think... 
and this question just popped into my mind that the uh, national health care, socialized health, whatever term, I don't know what the polite term is for it, had anything to do with that? Or do you think it's, because I've heard similar stories from other people yeah, here in the States. I mean, I, I can see that too. It's like recently, like, because I need a hip replacement and they, I was told they don't want to do it this young, right? I'm too young. Um, and I'm like, okay, I'm 52. I can barely walk. Um, it's painful doing anything on an incline or stairs. Um, I can't walk dog, you know, like, why can't you do it now when I could still go out and enjoy? Like, I don't care when I'm 60 or 65, if you have to do it again. And right. said to me, it's because the government doesn't want to have to pay for it twice. So if you were to get your hip replacement, say, five years from now it might last you until you die but if you do it now you're probably going to need to have another one so they don't want to put the money so pretty much a lot of people's thought is that you know yeah they're trying to save some bucks and you can just wait so with that part yeah i can see i can see a lot but most things are pretty good here um for just to get to see a specialist for my hip was probably 10 months almost a year wow um, sometimes you don't wait as long um three months six it really depends you know where you're going but i mean as for the the nerve block stimulator um or the spinal cord stimulator um they're they're well before i should say that the government wants to 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 cut funding to our pain clinics so I know you guys have different kind of insurance type, but a lot of these services are free for us. We don't have to deal with insurance. We just go. So yeah. for instance, I was going every, every week or every other week for my nerve block. They wanted to change it to, you could go four times a year. So from going every week or every other week to four times a year would, would do me no good. Absolutely. Right. Well, right. It's pointless. And so I think a lot of people started to panic and look for other options. And that's kind of how I got to where I was because a friend of mine said, look, my, my, my friend had this done. Why don't you research it? And I did. And so the wait list for that was actually not too long, but I think this is what made it longer, these cuts or threatening of cuts. They haven't done it yet. But um, so and I'm, I'm not trying to overly politicize it. I don't have a party. Right. But, but, but here's the thing is I – I'm always interested when I talk to people abroad because having grown up in Minnesota and lived there most of my life, we had people who would come down from Canada into Duluth oh, yeah, because you for MRIs and stuff. Yeah, and when I, so I know it to be fact because I've seen it and I've talked right. to the people. But then when I share that story, and like, again, like I said, I don't have a party, so I, I'm not trying to make political points in either direction but you know i have so many people oh that's bullshit you know or this or that and the main mainstream media seems to make it sound here in the usa and not that we don't have our problems with our health care system and insurance right. could have screwed you around oh, just uh, yeah, as I much i'm not nightmares i have a yeah. lot of friends in the u.s so i, I hear I yeah hear so i'm not uh, yeah i'm not trying to make it out like oh if you you'd have been better off hands down right. if you'd have been here. But um, I find when, and I don't watch the news as a rule, I don't even have subscription TV, but the little bit I do get from the mainstream news and media tries to make everybody else's hair, healthcare sound like Shangri-La and that's just not the case either. So anyway, I, you, know, you know, so like I said, I wasn't trying to, you know, uh, play a no, gotcha I mean, game or a political no, game, um, but there's there's been a lot of improvement in that whereas we used to sometimes have to wait months to get an MRI and now um you know there are places you could you could get in two three weeks but they do them you know sometimes you have to go at midnight yeah and that's how they because there's just an overwhelming number of people that you know need it but for sure there's a lot of people that go stateside uh, you know looking for options or to get things done quicker and the, the problem is when you when you have um some kind of injury or you know most often than not if it's treated 
sooner than later, you have a better success rate. Often. Yeah. And so I see a lot of people probably are in a worse off condition because they had it to wait so long. And it's like, if this, you know, could have been looked at and, and fixed sooner, uh, wouldn't have been as much damage. So yeah, there's a downside to, you know, that kind of wait period. Yeah. Well, with everything, there's an, uh, there's pluses and minuses to, you know, there's opportunity costs with everything. Um, f for instance, here in the States, you know, with, uh, a lot of people, I, one of the big reasons I, really have seen, I think, an influx of people into the spinal cord stimulator groups and stuff that I admin is because, <clears throat> excuse me, the opiate witch hunt, you know, that's what I call it because that's the way I see it. Um, you know, people are being driven to desperate measures and, well, you know, I'll tell you it's something scary. About that. It's kind of funny. Um, so now I've been on pretty much every nerve pain medication I've tried um, and Percocet um, was on, which I don't find helped me with nerve pain at all. And the thing is, um, I could get a, a prescription for Percocet from my doctor, but when he, because like I have a real sensitive stomach, so I'm nauseous from a lot of medications. And he suggested to try the, the you know, slow acting. Now, th these are the ones that the people are not seeking because they're slow release. They don't right. want them. But those are the ones my insurance wouldn't cover. <clears throat> they would cover the Percocet, but they wouldn't cover, you know, and I was forking out. So it just, a lot of it does make sense. And when, you know, you're saying, I, I want to get this to get off them, I don't want to have to take meds. You know, it's like, you got to wonder why they're not pushing this more as a therapy, right? If, if their big goal is to, I mean, I have many friends who legitly suffer excruciating pain and they have doctors that will not prescribe, you know, anything for them, Tylenol three, yeah. you know, like it's just cruel because these it are is. people that are, <laughs> and I know I've been lucky. Um, I can stop and start a medication. I don't really, have a lot of withdrawal type symptoms with Percocet. I've been on and off it for years. Um, and I don't have, I'm, I'm lucky I've not, but I've, I know I've heard so many people become addicted from it, but yeah. Well, thing. and I think, I think uh, politically and medically, they don't want to make a distinction. And, and I'm in a similar boat. I'll, I'll interject this. I probably take three to five pain pills, opiate based pain pills a week. Like if I'm going to ride in the car, I'm going to my physical therapy, which I do a couple hours in the pool to help me get through it. But yeah, I never found with my nerve issues, it doesn't really help them, but it distracts me enough. It, it makes it harder to pay attention to anything, including the pain. But um, the, uh, let's see, I, I was going to say the, the, I lost my train of thought now real quick. Sorry. Um, with the, oh, oh. The other thing is I talk to a lot of people who are on the other side of the fence, so to speak, patients who can be kind of obstinate about the idea. Well, if I'm getting relief from these pills, because, oh, I was going to say politically, I don't think they make a distinction between dependence and addiction because right. you can be dependent on them to function and you'll have physical withdrawals, but you may not have the psychological addictive craving I, I i don't have the education or the 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 knowledge to really split that hair but there's a difference for instance my buddy who's a diabetic named james he's dependent on insulin right but he's not addicted to insulin right. you know and there's people that take the pain pills for the pain they don't crave the pills but they still have physical withdrawals because of the dependency issue right. and i think that's something that they've really done a disservice to, uh, you know, chronic pain patients. But then on the other extreme, and, and let's be honest, if we're going to maintain credibility as chronic pain patients, we have to acknowledge, yes, there are people who abuse these meds. Oh, absolutely. 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 Are there doctors that are, you know, in uh, every, uh, for every pursuit, there's evil people that will do anything for money. There's doctors that there's prescribe them. Right. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. there are people who addict them, and there are people who are just, you know, I heard a gal the other day talking about, you know, I get these t this terrible aching if I don't take my one for about 12 hours. I said, well, that's not 
that's a withdrawal symptom. That's not, you know, and, and I'm not saying that the withdrawals aren't horrible and whatnot, but if she could get some help to get past that withdrawal thing, maybe she could, you know, it's, it's such a complicated is, situation. A, um, a lack of something in that transition. Like um, uh, I had a friend who was in a terrible motorcycle accident and then became dependent on, on, you know, the pain stuff, but there was really no help for him. So, to make the transition off. Yeah, and so if you're if you're going to be prescribing this, and legitly, there's a lot of people that really truly need it, mm -hmm. um, then they can't just like cut you off or you know, exactly. Whatever. And unfortunately, yeah, it is abuse, and and you know, usually the wrong people suffer as a result of it. Generally, and then you also, uh, to be fair, because I try I try and run you know give information and run the balance. There are patients who might be a candidate for a spinal cord stimulator or maybe even RFA or whatever, but they don't want to do it. And their argument is if I can just take these few pills, you know, then, and get by, if I can just take the pills, I don't want to do something more invasive. And I always try to convey to them. I understand that completely, but if you're looking at managing pain, especially severe chronic pain, I'm, you know, with... Your liver is going to toast out eventually. Right, yeah. with opiates literally for yeah. decades. Yeah. You know, there's... And well, and there's also bone density issues, hormone issues, uh, constipation issues. You know, it comes with its own set of problems, too. Unfortunately, as chronic pain patients, we're generally stuck between the rock and the hard place. There is yeah, no clear-cut best. Yeah. So I'm sorry, but yeah, I think that's, you know, uh, something that when I get a chance to speak with somebody who has a similar experience with the opiates, it's rare because you never hear about those of us who, let's say, take them, for lack of a better term, take them occasionally. You know, I don't take them daily. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I'm blessed, I guess, that I don't have to. I expect that, and one of the reasons I resist taking them is I tell the doctors, it doesn't matter to me if I'm at a three, a five, or a six in my pain level. If I'm sitting on the couch it's watching, kind of higher. Right. It, you know, if I'm just going to be sitting on the couch, it doesn't matter. And because from from everything I've uh, researched on the uh, on the topic, the the less you use them, the longer they're beneficial. Because you tend, again, nothing is everybody. But you tend, but there's a tendency to start increase taking more right to, to to become resistant to it or develop a tolerance. Well, yeah, to it. because you hear those people saying, "Oh, I take you know twenty a day." Well, you know, it's probably yeah because the, the body just is you know it's not yeah. that anymore. Exactly, and and you see that with a lot of things. I mean, let's take alcohol. Everybody's familiar pretty much with alcohol, but if you drink on a regular basis. Over time, and I'm not comparing oh, yeah, opiates absolutely. to alcohol, but, you know, it takes more to get that same effect. For sure. So I use that as an analogy. I don't think they're the same at all. You know, I'm not making comparison between alcohol and opiates. Other than that, they are both chemicals that as you use them, you seem to need more of them right. to get the same desired effect. And so. I, mean, I mean, from even before um, all my issues started, my you know with my with my health i was never uh i never even took stuff for a headache you know like we were always echinacea oregano we had all the health stuff we never you know the, the years ago by i never saw a doctor so you know you go from kind of one extreme to the other and it's tough yeah so and then uh so you had the rfas and you had the complications with those, and then you got you decided to start seeking the spinal cord stimulator. Yeah, so I had a friend who had done the trial. She's actually in the group too, Carol. Okay. And, um, she had done the trial, and so and and my girlfriend, you know, we're kind of all mutual friends. Or I I knew her, but um, she had said, "Listen, why don't you talk to her?" She had this thing done, and she'd mentioned it a couple times. So finally, I said, "Okay," and I was like super excited, like. I started looking and researching it and I was like, oh yeah, you know, like, because I felt I was at the end of my rope. I tried everything and then even the stuff that didn't work, I was willing to try it again. Yeah. So, um, like I said, I was desperate. I had tried every other type of therapy, even willing to go and do one a second time that didn't work just because I was like, 
52. Um, my mind is young and I w was so active and strong for so long. It's like, I, your life is just like kind of, everything hurts. You don't feel like doing anything. I tell people, I really believe you should be at a certain level of desperation before you're going to con you know, consider yeah, I mean, literally having a computer attached to your spinal cord. And, you know, I get people, I'm too afraid. I said, well, then look, I'm not trying to diminish your situation, but then you're not ready. And maybe you won't ever be ready. But if your fear is greater than your pain, I understand. But that just says you're not at the point of desperation. Because I'm going to be honest, man, I did not oh, yeah, really yeah. have a plan B that didn't involve, <laughs> you know, I, I had I had pain on a suicidal level. I mean, I'm not going to talk around it. I'll come out and say it because no, no, I think I, it needs to be said. Yeah. I mean, I was l seriously contemplating if this thing doesn't work. And I think that's why a lot of people stress over it and have a lot of anxiety over it, too, is if you're looking at this thing, you're pretty much – it comes to a fork in the road at the end of pain management where it's either spinal cord stimulator or pain pump are usually the two last things on the menu. And we, it was very briefly, just to be real clear, even discussed voluntarily paralyzing me from the waist down, but there was no assurances it would help. Right. So, I mean, I was in that kind of a desperate situation. And I, do, I, I, you know, if you've got an intermittent pain, or whatnot, and uh, yeah, it's not to be taken lightly. I, you know, it's definitely not something that people should be cavalier about. It's a serious, serious undertaking, you know. But right. uh, I, I mean, I think, um, like, I can even recall nights, you know, because I probably haven't slept through the night, and oh God, it's probably at least easy six years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a wake up from the pain. And there'd be times when you're just so exhausted and you, you roll over and I've in my head, you, you just want to grab, a, you want to throw down a handful of perks, yep. something, make it go away. And it's yep. like, you know, obviously it makes you think I can kind of see how people overdose sometimes, not maybe intentionally, but they're like, shit, man, I've just had enough of this. Yeah. I need a break. A handful, and, you know, honestly, I think, there could be a lot of that, but you know, you brought it up and, and, and I'll be honest, um, very, you know, very, okay. I wouldn't say suicidal as in, I want to go through it. It's just, you wake up and you don't want to be there and you're tired. You're just like, I, I don't want to, how am I going to get through this day? Um, I don't want to live like this. So it's not like, it is. It's it's a suicidal feeling. You're not actively, you know. It's just that I can't deal with this. I don't want to deal with it. If this is how I have to live, I don't want to be here. So I mean, I got to the stage where I thought, okay, I'm gonna go off myself. But I have to say that was my feeling. Off. I, I think it's a razor thin line. And I don't feel comfortable saying what other people should do in this regard, but I think there's a razor thin line between suicide and euthanasia. And we're seeing some States that are acknowledging there comes right. a point. And, you know, if you, if you're having those thoughts, get what help you need, you know, talk to some people, you know, Absolutely. obviously that's not For something sure. you want to make a snap decision. And, and, and I'm not in any way advocating that for anyone, but I do believe there can come a point where your quality oh, of life is so compromised. You have a better understanding of yeah. how someone might be in that position because right. you, you're, you're already entering that thought space. You know? Well, and in my personal story, my mom refused kidney dialysis because she had spinal issues uh, similar to my lumbar issues um, that had her bedridden for a decade in pain with the fibromyalgia, which I don't have, right. thank God. But, uh, you know, I had a hard time understanding how she, she had planned because she knew her kidneys were going to go. And we had talked about years in advance that, look, when, when it comes, I'm not doing the dialysis and all that. I'm ready to go. She'd made her peace. She hadn't been out of bed in literally years other than when they lifted her in and out. Right. You know, so, so she was ready to go. And, and I couldn't. Because I don't know uh, how, how people can do it. Yeah. And I, I couldn't. I, I respected her wishes and stood by her decision and backed her play, so to speak. 
But at that point in my life, I really had a hard time understanding. Right. When my pain was up at its worst, I won't say that I was ready to do that, but you know, we played the middle little mental games to ourselves where I could then see over the horizon, not now. Right. You know, right. we tell ourselves, oh, hey, not now, but I can see how someone else, not me, of course, right. might, might, you know, and we bullshit ourselves. Let's call yeah. it what it is. Yeah. You know, might choose to make that decision down the road as somebody, but, you know, and, and, and we really bullshit ourselves. And I also think, and one of the big reasons why I try to also, uh, I'm involved with a couple other pages uh, to try and have some community because I think this technology and the internet and social media allows us to reach out. Uh, and it really is a matter of life and death because the isolation that comes from it breeds the depression and the depression can lead to suicide. Oh, and again, absolutely. I'm using that term deliberately because yeah, there's a, a different, cycle, right? And, and exactly. It and um, I think there needs to be more information out because I haven't, talk to other than the one girl carol that's had it done everyone i've talked to has been nobody's ever heard of it yeah and you know it's like what is this new and i'm like no like i can't believe it's been around this long and it's like unbelievable i thought somebody would have and yeah. i even had posted on my facebook when i first started uh, when i heard about it uh, hey has anyone ever heard of it know anybody that's had it done nothing no one you know, so it's yep. really surprising for me. And, um, you know, considering all the specialists and, and pain clinics I went to, which is, you know, another <clears throat> problem with that too, because for instance, I, the, the doctor that I was going to, to get my nerve blocks, I asked him about the spinal cord stimulator and, um, he said, no, that's not for you. It's that's for people who's I had lots of back surgeries and blah, blah, blah. It wouldn't work for you. So, you know, you kind of, you go to all these A clinic, pain clinic, B, you know, C, you, you, and they all have their little, oh no, that doesn't work, but ours works. Or this is a better, it's like, I think there's nobody really working hand in hand for you. You have to go out and see. And be your own they, advocate. Right. They all believe that their therapy is the best. So well, I have a, I didn't tell him I was going to do it. At that point, I had already booked it, but I wanted to know his thoughts on it because he's he's one of the top back surgeons <clears throat> here in Toronto. So well, you know, they I say I respect that. You know, absolutely. And they, you know, the old the expression, I guess, is for somebody who only has a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. You know, if that's what they do, then that's what they see. Right. Um, also, uh, in the same vein. A lot of people say, well, you know, I talked to my neurologist and he says, he, you know, they never work or this or that, which, you know, they don't work for everybody. Um, be real clear up front. Nothing works for everybody. I get it. But, you know, people come in t into my group talking about, you know, I hear 75% of people, it's a failure and they haven't removed within a year. I said, who even talking? Well, my neurologist told me, well, your neurologist is only talking to the people who are having problems right. because the people who have success, they're not going to see a neurologist. They're I went, I went from being, I don't know if I've told you my particulars no, and my no. real, my condensed story is I went from being, I spent eight months pretty much housebound slash bedridden. I, I would, if I was up in vertical, I would literally have tears running down my face. You know, the non-emotional crying and people find that creepy. It, it destroys any socialization because right. people are uncomfortable. <laughs> You know, I'd be in the grocery store checking out, and there'd be tears running down my face. And I'd be wiping them off, and the gal would be, are you okay? I said, yeah. I said, it's nothing to be concerned about. I'm not upset. It's a physical thing. You know, almost like if my eyes were watering uncontrollably. But so anyway, I went. <clears throat> I was taking the, the – they had me on the, two of my oxys, you know, around the clock. I got to the point where I was waking up in the middle of the night. I'm going to call it dope sick because it's sick. I don't, I don't need to use a polite term. You feel sick. I felt like I was going to die. Worst flu I'd ever had. <clears throat> and when they told me their solution was take two right before you go to bed, and that way it yeah, should last I've through bed. I've heard that. Okay, and I'm like, you yeah, know I'm what? Sure. If And I'm looking at thinking, you know, I know about opiates, and, and my mom had used them intermittently, and they didn't really work for her well with her fibromyalgia. 
and knowing about about them as a as a whole, I said, you know, I don't want to get any more of a monkey on my back than I have to. So I decided, look, they don't help that much anyway. So I I tapered off because I had had some. So I was able to taper off and let it go and uh, get off them. But so I was basically housebound, bedridden for about eight months, waiting to get my implant. And I was in the casino business. But I went back you, to. Had you already had the trial at that point? No, I. I oh, it, okay. Yeah, it was about it's seven right months into that, that that I got my trial. But actually, six because I had a two month wait. Uh, because I had to choose between my doctor was going on vacation, who had done all my RFAs, and we had a relationship, or I could have somebody new, completely new to the clinic that I'd never even met, do my implant, right. or wait an extra thirty days. I'm like, you know what? I came this far. Yeah. I'll wait the extra 30, 30 days. days. Yeah. But, uh, which is, is people say 30 days, but when a day seems like a week, it's a long time. It's a long 30 days. Like, yeah, that was the trigger that I picked cigarettes back up. I, I make no bones about it. When they, when they put me to the decision, did I want to get it done in July or wait until August? And I'm not making excuses. I own my shit, okay? I'm a nicotine addict. I have yeah, been most of my life. Now, so. Yeah, you know, so. I have it on me at this point. It just yeah, <laughs> and, I, and that's that, that was what put me over starting up again. But, yeah, so when I got my implant, I'll tell the, I'll tell the whole thing real briefly. Uh, at my trial, when they first turned it on, I broke out in tears because I knew I had found finally something, something. to interrupt because I had the sensation of like mice or something were chewing on my spine. Oh God. And the more I moved around, the more bi the bigger and more aggressive they got. And when I laid back down, they would calm down, so to speak. So when they first turned on and I broke out crying, the nurse who was running my IV meds for the pain of having it done freaked out a little bit she goes are you okay i said yeah i said you don't understand i said that's this is the first time i haven't had pain it's, it's, in yeah. in probably a, close to a decade in my situation so then i went back to standing on the casino floor 40 hours a week with no meds whatsoever yeah. so you know Incredible, for me right yeah it was absolutely like magic so that's that's just my story of how i you know how extreme my success was right. and, and you know so i tell people i said don't get me wrong i understand i'm pretty much the poster boy for spinal cord stimulator success not everybody's going to have the success level i have but some are and there's everything along the you know up and down the the uh spectrum so but uh, yeah please continue yeah so um basically at that point um you know i i Asked my doctor for a referral. My, you know, my friend had said a couple times, go check it out. So um, I'd researched it and I was like, yeah, you know, I want to, this is something I want to have a go. And um, at that point, uh, the wait list just to get into the pain clinic was eight to 10 months. Oof. So by the time, like, I get a, my doctor to refer and they call me, it was like that, that was the waiting period. So I went to my family doctors and I'm lucky. I, I've got a really great family doctor and he's on board with trying anything or whatever. So yeah, no problem. He sent it off that day. And literally two weeks later, I get a call on a Friday and they said, we have an opening on Monday. And I was like, Oh, you know, I'm there. Um, because right now I'd still be on the waiting list just to get to the, to the clinic. So I went the Monday and that was, um, back in May, first week in May. And, um, you know, you, you, you went, you brought all your meds and your MRIs and all that crap. And you filled out this questionnaire and they sat down and, and talked to, you know, what were your, your problems. And he pretty much said, you know, um, most people that come in that have had a failed back surgery, they're signed up for one right away. Um, he said, but because you've, pretty much exhausted every avenue, every medication, um, you know, you're a candidate for the trial. So I was really happy about that. And then they booked it for, for August. So um, actually the doctor that the surgeon that does my nerve block injections, um, I go see him next week. He doesn't know I've, I've done the trial. 
um, I had told him that, you know, or I'd asked him about it and he, he didn't really think it was a thing for me, but I mean, I'll go back to him in the meantime to get as, as much relief as I can during this waiting period, but sure. Absolutely. Uh, but so, um, you know, I went down uh, for the trial and they were really good there. They explained everything very thorough, um, over the phone. I had to do a questionnaire and, um, I guess the only one thing that I hear a lot of, um, and there was someone on the, on your page there that had mentioned he had failed the first kind of assessment. Um, oh, the psych exam. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, I think it's unfair. They put too much on the depression, mental health state. Mm -hmm. side of it because let's be honest. Uh, you know, when we're we're going into this trial, or, or for this as an option, you know, most of us are not even. Oh, you're putting something near my spinal cord. I don't care. Sign the line. Like you yeah. are so desperate for, you will pretty much not even consider, you know, the, the the bad possibilities or side effects. You're just like, if there is something out there that might help me live without pain, I'm trying. I, you know, so all these people are probably at the point, you know. And of waiting and specialists and this and that and and have probably gone down the same road tried and so many disappointments right and you know you're grasping at any little hope and then of course you're going to be depressed of course you're going to be you know maybe even suicidal because you you, you don't want so i think it's unfair that they got to have some kind of understanding and and i get it they don't want to maybe legally be responsible that you made some decision when you weren't in the right mental capacity. But to be honest, I think so many people that are in that much pain, if you're not depressed, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, exactly. Like, we all know it takes away your life, your enjoyment, the effects on your family, your friends, everything. You know, yeah, so whenever I go into the doctor's office and they have that, the the we'll call it the depression questionnaire where you fill it out and they yeah. totally your points i always score high because i don't sleep well uh, do i sometimes i indulge in uh comfort food you know and eat to self-medicate i ain't gonna lie you know and, and, and xyz so they sent me a couple of times now for assessments and you know my my long-term prognosis because i've got problems with my lumbar spine and my cervical spine and my long-term prognosis is full C4 paralysis. So for those who aren't familiar with that, think Christopher Reeves. That's right. my prognosis. So I have what, they ref what they've referred to as situational depression as opposed to clinical depression. Right. Because, it, again, like you said, it would be ridiculous to think that somebody who's looking at that or who is living with chronic pain or whatever – you know, we have situations that cause you to be depressed, rightfully so. Right. You know, it's not necessarily, in those cases, it's not necessarily some kind of an illness or ailment. It's a natural response to a shitty situation sometimes. Yeah, and I think that that needs to be taken into consideration. <clears throat> because I really felt for that guy when he said he yeah. had another assessment. Because I'm like, man... The guys live, you know, I, don't know, I can't remember what he said, eight years or something, you know, bad pain. And now the only thing on his mind is, is that maybe his only hope is not, it's not going to be there because he's going to fail some assessment. Yeah, because, some stupid you know, test. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, given to that, I think that part of it may need to, to change a bit. That's just my opinion. But um, no, I think I that's a really valid that point. I think that when they book me, I have to do it. If, if I, I'm pretty sure that's the way it goes. I mean, I just did whatever assessment in the form. So I believe there's another one before the permanent, but, um, you know, honestly, people are going to then just start to fudge it if they know that. That's exactly. The way they have to go. So look, you want people to be honest or, you know, but don't expect someone that's in that kind of pain to to not have some kind of depression going with it exactly um, yeah so i mean yeah I, so I, I i signed up i got the trial on the on the 13th of august and um i mean i would you know i'm gonna be honest and say i really i was hopeful but i was scared to be hopeful because i tried so many things mm -hmm. whereas other people had success i just wasn't getting it and i was like why 
why do or I'm not having success with the pills and procedures everyone else is, you know? So I kind of thought, but I was like so shocked. I really was. I could not believe it was better than I expected. And, um, you know, the first couple of days, <coughs> excuse me, um, it was just more or less a discomfort. Um, and I wasn't sleeping well because I was trying to find out how to sleep with this battery tape to my body. Right. Um, not wiggle the wire around. <coughs> but by the, th I mean, I, other than that, right away, I had no nerve pain in my legs. Um, even my hip and the doctor had said to me, because I need a hip replacement, he said, um, it may or may not help. Um, so I knew going in possibly yes or no, but it, more than I thought, um, other than later on, of course, now all of a sudden you can walk. So you're walking and then later on in the night and they just said, because the nerve part of it was working, but you know, the inflammation you get in the tissue and the bone and all that, that's not going to help that kind of pain. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, and the results with that really do vary from person to person because I know it covers everything for me. And and I think this is unique because uh, the spinal cord stimulator experience, I often talk about how it's not like any other surgery because the reps don't really know what it feels like because they don't have one. The doctors never had one. They've never right. had a trial. Right. So I always make the comparison. It's kind of like Ann Sullivan and Helen Keller. You know, they're – Right. Or, or the other analogy I use is they're like a, 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 a blind person because they literally don't have the physical capacity to take in the sensation and the input. Right. That they're like a blind person who's been told about color by somebody who can see, and then they're trying to tell – Right. that to another blind person because yeah. they haven't experienced it. They don't know what the sensation's like, you know, and, and I think a lot of it is a fine tuning thing and they don't know everybody. It's my understanding that everybody's spinal cord when we're still in utero is constructed differently. So what works for one person may not work oh, for yeah, another. Yeah. So, and that's why, because generally you're, <laughs> Your essential functions, your heart and, and lungs, the involuntary type stuff is in the center. And as you, the spinal cord grows out, you get, you know, your peripheral, you know, leg pain. But some people, they just can't reach it to the area they need. Some people will work. A lot of it, I think, is uh, I don't like to diss on the reps because I know most of them are doing the best they can. Some of them come off like used car salesmen, let's be honest. <laughs> but, you know, they don't know. Right. They really don't know exactly what the hell they're talking about because they they've never experienced. Have someone that had it be a rep. I okay. think it would be the nuts if we could get a you know if they could hire people who have them to be reps. But let's face it, or even with the absence, of, <laughs> I've actually been pondering making a video directed towards reps because I try to help as many people as I can with information, but if I can get the reps to understand better, to communicate better, um, to do a better job, then each of those reps will affect many people having better right. success. Everybody that they come in contact exactly. with. Exactly. So I've been thinking about that because I'll tell you my pet peeve when it comes to these things and, and on the internet to read, and it makes me just grit my teeth and want to throw shit, is when, oh, that's just an implanted TENS unit. The only thing it's got together in common with a TENS unit is they're both electric. Okay. Now, I get, having used both, how you might say the vibration – if you even choose to have the vibration it's on. on that same kind of idea. Right. And it might have a similar sensation for feeling. Although with this, you know, with you change the frequency, you can change the speed of the vibration. Right. I always tell people, I got mine dialed in. It's about the size of a 45 record in the small of my back. And it feels like a house cat's laying on my back and purring. That's what I've got it dialed into. Right. But, you know, so, you know, and the vibration, and I also think they don't have any appreciation for how delicate a thing it is. They're electrifying somebody's spinal cord. So, you know, I've had some reps where they're just, I call it wheel happy. They're, do you feel it? Do you feel it? Do you feel it? And yeah. there's a lag between when they make a change right. and it takes effect. Right. 
So there are three spins of the wheel, so to speak, <laughs> past where I can feel it. So then when it comes on, it's like, oh, my God. And it's so drastic. I tell people there used to be these barrel-shaped things at the mall that you could sit on, and they had a platform that vibrated your feet. Yeah. If you'd been walking all day. To, and it was just like sitting on a damn jackhammer. It reminds you know, me of the time, like, um, and luckily for me, I had good benefits with the post office, and uh, we were allowed to have a TENS unit, like, you know, not like a Dr. Ho, but a, a kind of bigger, more professional one, uh, one per employee per lifetime. So I remember that same dialing it up until my arm was like... Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know, if that's... that's <laughs> right. Well, and, and also... Uh, I don't want to pick on the patients either, but I read it so often. I don't want the vibration. I'm like, okay, well, did you have, how was it during your trial? Was it, I haven't had my trial. Well, then how do you, you don't, you're talking, you've already made up your mind about something that you haven't even experienced yet. Yeah. You know, it's like the kid that looks at dinner and goes, I don't want that. Well, you haven't even tried it yet. You yeah. don't even know. Yeah. So yeah, th those are two of the things that I think there's a lot of room for improvement. And I get, you know, like I tell people, I said, yeah, the TENS unit works through the peripheral nerves, through the skin and whatnot, but that's a completely different ball of wax from intercepting the nerve signal at the spinal cord. Right. You know, so, but yeah, it's, uh, I think some of the reps, and I, I don't name drop brands and stuff too much, but some of the companies are so intent on high frequency because if I think their thinking is if you don't feel it then you don't have to get reprogrammed and they don't have to deal with it as right. much more of a set it and forget it thing right. but you can but then that brings up you know you can have overstimulation you can have other complications so I think some reps you know let's face it they're, they're making a living the fewer times they have to come see you the better off it is the better it is for them right. So I, I'm really a big advocate for have them unlock everything they can, play with it, work well, yeah, with it. And like I had that problem with mine over the weekend. And, you know, I called and left a message Saturday, but I didn't get a call back till Monday. And it's like, you know, when you're, you're talking about a seven day trial, that's three, three days for me, right? Yeah. That's a big block of your yeah. time. So, I mean, like I was really, from right off when they turned it on and when I was in the recovery, um, it was just the weirdest. I didn't know what to expect, but I could feel a tingling all down my legs and it was gone. I, I just was really, really shocked how, like it was just instant, right? Not for everything, but for the, for the nerve pain in my legs, it was. And, um, so that was on a Tuesday and on the Friday I was to go back for, um, you know, check and a bandage change. And um, I said to her, you know, it's been great. Like I, I feel great and um, it's helped with my hip and my back. I have no nerve pain in my leg. I had slight in my one thigh still, but nothing comparable to what I had. Um, and I had said to her, the only thing was, I thought it might help my back pain more than it did. Like it's better, but not as much as I thought it might be. So and she was, well, we'll do another program. And so, you know, she set up the second program and off I went and it seemed to be fine until I woke up the next day. Um, because, you know, that whole, you wake up and it's like, excuse my language, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like in, in pain and, and, you know, normally without it, it's hard for me to even just sit up in bed in the morning and I sit at the side of my bed for about five minutes. And when I get up, it's like rickety, you know, like hobbling. Mm -hmm. And, um, your thought is I just need to get through this day, you know, mm -hmm. how this, this kind of body. So <clears throat> I'd went to like the day before I was walking, walking the dog and everything was good. And I just couldn't believe you forget what it feels like to live, you know? And then wham, back it came. And I just sat on the bed and I was crying. It was like, it's so silly because I was like, I, if I could have just had a few more days pain relief, right? Like it's right. not there. So I started fiddling around with it. I left her a message and I thought, well, probably for the work weekend. Um, so I ended up, you know, I was adjusting the frequency and then I switched it back to the old program. And 
by that night it was working again on the original program. So I think it might have been the cycle she had it on because the first program had it like it was on for a minute and a half off for half a minute. And the other one was six minutes off. And so I think that might have been it. But anyways, by the Sunday morning, it, I was good to go again. So, you know, Sunday, Monday, um, all's good. I'm happy as pig and shit. I just, I'm so amazed it surpassed any expectation I had. I, I was thrilled. But in the back of my mind, I kept thinking I, I, I couldn't truly enjoy it because I just kept thinking I got to go on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and um, I just experienced that shock of a light switch. Yeah. You know? Like, and I, I don't know if it was because I didn't expect it to happen that Saturday morning. I was expecting to wake up feeling good, but really, at, at that moment. I realized, and then that, you know, you, you just can't imagine until the pain is gone. When it comes back, you think, holy fuck, I can't. How did I live like I, this? Yeah. How did I live <clears throat> with this much pain? Like, you know, you were in pain every day. You felt like shit. You didn't want to. You and almost so, become used to it. Right. And, yeah. and then when it goes away, you think, I cannot believe I was living with that much pain for so long. And you know, Tuesday I went down and I was so bummed out and like, I was waiting for her to call me and she'd already seen me. And by the time she called me and I was crying and she's like, you know, what's wrong? And I'm like, I'm just not ready for you to take it. You know, like, yeah. I feel like a baby, but it's like when you finally have relief and uh, you know, she had told me like, we're, we're booking maybe mid end of October, November. Um, People say, well, uh, you know, look, I mean, I get it. I keep saying to myself, <laughs> there's a light at the end of the tunnel for me. Right. So yeah. Grateful. I'm so grateful that and excited that I can start living again and do things that I used to enjoy and feel alive. Because let's face it, anybody with chronic pain, they're just existing. They're not living, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's like, oh my God, I I'm going to have some kind of life. And I know it's like, People go, it's two months. Like, it's a big deal. But <laughs> you, you can't explain it. Yeah, it's, no. It if so you haven't been well. there, yeah. yeah. If you haven't been there, you don't know. Yeah. And I mean, even when I went on the Friday, um, and she had said, so how's it going? And I was like, oh, my God, I it's great. I said, I couldn't walk a block with the dog. I said, I walked up here from the train station almost two kilometers. And I started to cry because – it just kind of hit me saying that out loud. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you know, a week ago, I couldn't walk around the block. And now I'm, and I just kind of, it was this emotional release that I realized, like, how huge that was. And, she, you know, I guess she's seen it before because. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, but she said it is kind of cruel. It's cruel that we give you this. We kind of tease you with it and then we take it away. But, you know, I just have to say, at least for me, I know it works. Um, and I, I, I can't, I just try to push that away and think, you know, it'll get here and there's hope for me. And, and I couldn't imagine if it, if it didn't work for me. Yeah. Um, I would, I don't know. I like, I honestly don't know because. I've, I've tried pretty much everything and yeah. there's nothing really that's going to help me. And a lot of people talk about when, when they get their trial out that their pain gets worse. I said, actually, I don't think, I don't know that it gets worse and yes, it could probably aggravate things. And in some cases that's probably true, but I think a lot of times we do, like, like we were talking about, you don't realize yeah, you how bad the it. pain is. Well, and for most of us, like I've got degenerative conditions, so it came on by degrees. Right. You know, it wasn't like one day all of a sudden, I wasn't in like an accident where somebody, sh uh, you know, I was in a, I wasn't in like a car accident where my spine got shattered and I had the pain right. come on overnight. Right. So as you develop the pain and it, you know, I guess ripens for like, you know, I mean, it becomes well, yeah, more and more severe. And then when they interrupt it, you're like, wow. And you don't realize, you know, it's kind of like boiling the frog. They say you take, take a frog and put him in a, pot of water and if you raise the temperature slowly you can actually get it to boil before you'll jump 
you know, That's crazy. and, uh, yeah, it, it's like that. Yeah. And then when, when they pull it and, and a lot of people worry about having them removed, I said, man, you ain't even going to notice it. Cause it's just, out. Oh, I couldn't, that was like, I think I felt probably the only thing I felt was when they took the stitch out Yep. and they were like, it's out. And I'm like, I didn't even feel it. Yeah. And, and so a lot of people are so afraid of that, but then when that pain comes back and mine came back literally within minutes, Man, yeah, it's it, like a oh my break. god, yeah, it it really, it, it really is. That's that's exactly what I tell people: it's pain on, pain off. I think, um, if if I had to critique something they could do differently, it would be instead of worrying about our mental health, depression to be, you know, it should be preparing us better for that <laughs> when we yank that out. Yeah. You know? Um you know, hey, this is what's, especially when they know, like, you know, the doctor said to me, I used to do these w w one a day. Now I'm doing six. Yeah. You know? So, um, okay. So back then you had the trial a week or two later, you got the permanent, you know? Um, so if they know it's going to be months, there should be some kind of prep. That yeah. Be, you know what I would say? Look, um, you don't want to scare people off, but you have to prepare them too. Um, and I mean, like for me, they told me, continue taking your pain meds while you have it. But I didn't, I stopped everything because I wanted to know for me, right. What's what, I mean, it was like, when I think back about a year or two ago, I went into my doctor and I was on Lyrica and Amitriptyline and Gamapentin and, you know, all those Percocet. Uh, back of men, you know, a mixture of all these things. And I said to him, Hey, look, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I just went cold turkey off everything. I said, because I don't know at this point, what's helping me, what's not, I feel nauseous all the time. And I want to kind of try to go one by one and add everything back in, you know, and yeah. I'm, sure I'm not the, you probably can't stand doctors and pa or patients. that just, you know, you're not supposed to do that shit. But anyways, um, so it was the same thing with this. I wanted to know if I took, if I took pain meds while I was on it, it wasn't going to give me a true idea. Right. Of, is this really going to work? So I'm like, oh, for a week I take nothing. And I want to see for sure this is hundred percent. This is working. Not, you know, maybe 10, 20% is the pain pills and the rest. So for right. me, it was clear cut. Um, you know, it helped so much more than I thought. And I had no expectation with my hip. I had asked a, a few people on the page in the Facebook page, did they have success to help the hip? You know, it was about 50, 50 from what I remember. Some did, some did. Um, but honestly, I don't even care. I'm, I'm yeah. so happy with that. And if, if it means I got to wait two months, like uh, I got to suck it up. Because I had a good friend of mine see me walk across the street. I had been talking to my neighbor uh, who lived directly across the street from my house. And, uh, and, and I didn't get out much. So he was like, Hey, it's good to see you out. And I was talking with him. My friend pulled up cause he was coming over and he said, he said he saw me walk across the street and could see a difference in just the way I moved. Yeah. And uh, I also had another friend come by and in, in, in the house we used to own, you could look from the front door, you could look out windows to the deck. Right. And I was sitting out there and I was just sprawled, chilling in a chair. And I, I'm known for wearing like real loud Hawaiian shirts and shit because, you know, I'm not going to go unnoticed at 6'2", 300 pounds, so I might as well make a statement, right? <laughs> and he said, dude, I thought that, he came out on the deck, he goes, man, I thought that was you, but I was like, there's no way because he just don't sit like that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I mean, not only did I notice a difference, my wife uh, walking out of the clinic from my trial said, you are walking so much different. So yeah, the same thing. And like I said, uh, for those, for the, I tell people all the time for the people it works for, it's almost like magic. It's like somebody flips a switch and my heart really, yeah. breaks. It really is. Yeah. And my heart absolutely breaks for the people who don't have success with their trial because man, it, imagine. yeah, it, it, it absolutely was amazing. Yeah, I mean, at this point, like we said before, it's kind of a not a last resort, but you're getting to the end of your right. life when you're yeah. looking to have this done. So, I mean, I don't know statistically where you can get an accurate 
you know how how what the percentage is that they actually work but i, I mean i'd be willing to try it if there was yeah. anybody out there who were were questioning whether to go through with it i mean yeah i mean i, I can look and say i have hope to to get back into walking and riding and a, anything you know. I tell people, if you're at the point where you're really considering this, then you probably don't have a whole lot left or a whole lot to lose by doing a trial, and the trial will likely remove any doubts one way or the other. Right. Because I hear very few people after a trial that are still on the fence. They are either all the way sold or they're like, yeah. it didn't do nothing for me. You know? Well, then you got to wonder, too, for the, for the ones that didn't have the success, how much is it that it wasn't programmed better or the lead? Like, I don't know about in this, in the U S there, how they do it. I, I only know how the, my doctor here explained it to me that he said, he knows that some surgeons do two leads in the trial and um, he only does one. And what he said was he found that scar tissue can actually form. And then when you go to have the permanent, he has trouble getting two leads in. And he said he's never, ever had a problem with one. So he said, you, you might not get as good coverage with one. Um, so that you were, because he said, I had such a great, you know, response. He goes, imagine with two. Yeah. So, like I'm actually considering maybe doing for my neck one up there. I haven't really decided that quite yet, but either way, um, it makes me wonder whether was the lead, like obviously, somebody could have done i mean i'm jumping all over the place but you know they tell you you know no twisting no bending no reaching over your head no well that's really hard i found that mm -hmm. i drop something i bend over oh shit i reach in the cupboard oh shit so is it that possibly these people maybe move the lead yeah you can't just one day it, you're going to catch yourself doing these things Maybe that's that. Maybe it wasn't programmed as good as it could have. Maybe right. it wasn't in the right spot. So you got to kind of wonder how legit the ones that claim that didn't work really could have been a result of something else too. Yeah. Well, and, and that's one of the things that I often talk about is there's so many variables. Right. You know, because everybody's conditions a little different. Everybody's spinal cord's a little different. Everybody's placement ends up being a little different. You know, there's just, and, and programming is so specialized. You know, that's like, I have people, well, you know, I run a four and my friend runs a 10. I said, you got to get, it's not apples and apples because right. his 10 could be your three and your three could be his, because they're, right. it's a, it's a custom thing. It, it's right. not once, it's not like turning up the volume on a remote for your stereo. <laughs> you know, the programming right. is, right. is unique to the individual. Uh, based on, you know, because all of our central nervous systems are somewhat different. Right. So, but yeah, I always wonder that. In fact, I know people who have had trial with brand A and then not given up on the idea and decided to have a trial with a different brand. And of course, then they swear by that brand. Oh, really? But who, but who knows? It could oh, have it, been it, the placement. It could have been the doctor. That's right. It could have been the placement. Could have been, you could have got a bad lead. Maybe your lead, you know, who knows? That's but yeah, I actually never uh, thought of that either. It could have been, yeah. could have been the lead. No. That's one of the reasons I avoid brand. I happen to have a Medtronic. Okay. Do, does Medtronic have some cool bells and whistles? Yeah. Okay. But I don't name drop on it because I really try to steer people in the group away from the idea that this brand is great and that one sucks. Because yeah. look, at the end of the day, there's three variables that you control with electricity, frequency, voltage, amperage. That's pretty much it. Okay. So it's not like one's got some magic bullet that the right. others can't recreate right. for the most part. Okay. They all have some different little bells and whistles. But there's such a fierce, I tell people it's really Coke, uh, Ford and Chevy and Coke and Pepsi. Right. You know, I almost said Ford and Coke, which really would have made no <laughs> sense. But, you know, people tend to, let's face it, everybody loves what works. You know, so if you've got, a, if you've got brand Z and it works for you, then brand Z is the shit. And it's funny because the only place that I've seen people have such, we'll just say fanatical brand attachment is sports. 
<laughs> you know, because right. some people, right. their team is the team, and they ain't won a pennant or, or a Super Bowl in, you know, in forever. But, man, their team is the team. And, and some people have this brand loyalty, you know, or they'll come in. And, you know, and, uh, and like I said, I've talked to people who've had different units. To, right? Sure, exactly. Well, you got to consider oh, well, the source. This, or, well, I've heard this. Right. But, I mean, I don't, um, I don't know. Well, I'm curious. So your insurance company there, I, I, is, it, is it different from state to state, how it works? Or like, how would they, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that they would have a trial and then allow you to do an, a trial with another brand. Like, um, yeah, it, it's, it's fairly rare. Um, health insurance in the U.S. is such a mess that each state you can't buy insurance po policies across state lines because each state has written up its own, we'll just call it the rules for what they have to cover, how they got to cover. So each state, yes, each, you buy a policy for the state you're in. So in theory, I'm sure you could move from one state to another perhaps and get right. a second trial. But this was, the, the cases I've heard have been pretty extreme and extremely desperate situations where more than one trial because it's a pretty rare circumstance yeah i would think I think yeah so now then the other thing i'm curious is because um what they explained to me um when i had it removed was i had three options and i i should know this but i'm drawing a blank i think it's proclaim or acclaim was the brand they used but they said i could have um one that was um, they they place the lead in the body, but you wear the pack outside, and you have to recharge it, and it has to be attached to your clothes. I was like, yeah, frick, that's never gonna happen. I'll leave yeah. it for it. I'm not gonna, you know. And then the that's really pack, cutting edge. And somebody in the group, it's it's actually pretty new. And somebody in the group has it. And I gotta be honest, to me, if you're going through all this. Getting the battery pack implanted is the, the least of the worries. I mean, they're putting leads literally in your epidural space inside right. your spinal column. Right. You know, so, so worrying about having the battery implanted just seems like you're focusing on the wrong thing. Well, I think but, because everybody complains that that's the worst of the pain. Sure, but but each to their own. Now, like in my case, I run, I run four programs 24-7. I got an upper low. I got a left back. Uh, I got my left upper back, right upper back, left leg and right leg. And that way they're able to balance my legs independently so that right. they feel similar so that one doesn't have much more sensation than the other and whatnot. And I do my physical therapy in the pool and I need it 24 seven because you can't get that thing. And I'm not dissing on it. Hey, for those of you who you think that's going to be for you, of, go for it. But I, yeah. it, it's just one more fucking thing for me to keep track of. Let's be honest. You know, I lose shit as it is. Oh, so I don't need one more thing to keep track of. Vacation, you lose it or someone steals oh, your God vacation. forbid. Did you imagine? Well, yeah. And not only that, you can't get it wet. Yeah. You can't shower. You can't pool. You can't. So it has its, it has its negatives that, and personally, I would think you would have skin breakdown from having it from what I understand, it attaches, they use an adhesive, you know, to put it on every well, day yeah, to keep it in place. I think she spent maybe 30 seconds on that. And I said, no, it's not going to be an option. Yeah, no, that wasn't. Yeah. It, it's not something that even if they had suggested it to me, it's not something I would have chosen, you know, God bless, you know, do what you want. That's and like right. I said, we're starting to see a few people trickle in that have it, but I really don't see where there's a dramatic upside to skipping the battery being internal. Right. I just don't see it. Well, um, so yeah, the other two options were the smaller size that would last three to five years and the larger battery that would last five to seven. So she said, basically, that's all you got to decide is what size you want. Yeah. Um, for me, now there's, I, there's I chargeable, there's rechargeable, and then there's some that are not, not rechargeable. rechargeable. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> see, I've got a rechargeable battery. Yeah. No, but I throw so much. They even when I see a rep, they're like, "Wow, you are really running some serious shit. You must have some serious problems." Because you're, you know, when I first got it, I ran one program, and I've got a degenerative condition. That's what a lot of people don't take into account. Yeah. Yeah. And I started out charging every couple of weeks, and now I, 
I could probably go two and a half, maybe three days. I tend to, I listen to some music. I lay down and charge for about 45 minutes a day. Because right. I just charge by laying down in bed and putting the thing under me. Because it's the most convenient way for me to do it. And that way I don't really have to worry about it. But yeah, because I'm throwing so much current, you know, using right. so much compared to when I first got it. You know, that's one of the things I think a lot of people aren't prepared for either is, First of all, when they talk about complications from these things, a lot of the studies I read, and I did a whole video about, you know, are star spinal cord stimulators safe? Because implants, medical implants were in the news briefly with all this, you know, really negative stuff about them. So I took the numbers from a really negative article and broke them down. But if you're going to count things like multiple reprogrammings as a complication, yeah, that should be expected. Because as you become more active, you generate more pain. Not one thing is going to be for the whole population. You really got to fine tune it. So, yeah, that's not that's not reflecting anything accurately if they're taking that to, into consideration. Exactly. So, and and if you have a degenerative condition, and your condition gets worse, or you get more active, and now you're generating more pain for it to block, there's a lot of things at play. So, yeah, I know it took me probably a year. I went through some pretty specialized and and uh, intense physical therapy and a lot of reprogramming. It probably took me a year to really get it dialed in to where I felt it was, you know, I was back to as close as I was ever going to get to being physically normal, mentally right. that ship sailed. <laughs> I've never been normal. Yeah. I think, um, I think it's good that they have people that take the time to try to make it perfect for you. I mean, I, I guess it's all depending on you're lucky enough to get a good rep, you know? And I've had people tell me, oh, my rep was in a hurry. And I, I tell them, straight, I look, fuck that. Well, this is your life. To turn the program on or this. Yeah. Or that. And yeah. Like, okay. Well, you know, it's not a kind of desk job where you can just leave that till Monday. It's people right. kind of screwing around with Exactly. Right. But I mean, I, I'm kind of glad I don't have to recharge and stuff like that. But, um, you know, she said eventually, it'll come up maybe a few months before batteries get low and then you got to kind of make an appointment to go in. And I guess the only thing for me was once that little message would come up, I'd probably be paranoid. I wouldn't take that off, you know, but really I don't have any fear of um, anything else or, you know, I'll, even if, I, even if they didn't have the implant option, I'd be getting that one to wear on my clothes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, if that's all they had, you would take it. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, for me, um, it was a huge success. And my only thing is the weight I find hard. But like I said, I, I don't want to seem like a big baby. You know, <laughs> I'm just so grateful to have found something that works for me. And I know, you know, I'm almost there. But yeah. I would, uh, anyone considering doing the trial, I, you know, put it this way. Anybody I talk to now that has chronic pain, back pain, <laughs> I've, you know, I've already probably told four or five people. Um, and then even some of their friends have come back to me and said, you know, can I have some more information? And I'm like, yeah, I, if, if I could help somebody's life improve that drastically just by giving them the information in a heartbeat. And like, I, I make the joke that it... Surprised. I don't know if they have this up in Canada. I'm sure they probably do, but I, I make the joke. It makes us into like Amway salesmen or like multi-level marketing. They're, you know, you want to sell it. Hey, my wife, there'd be times she'd be like, honey, come on. You know, she's, we're just trying to, but no, I'd see somebody a with a cane limping in the grocery store. I'd see them limping down the aisle and be like, hey, look, I don't mean to get in your business. <laughs> But I can see you limping, and I used to walk like that, and I had this. I mean, it's like a. It's the only thing I can think of. It's like a religious conversion. I mean, you you yeah, almost become a fanatic true. because it is such a dramatic, life changing. You know, maybe that's not too far off. You know, because it is such a dramatic, life changing, Absolutely. mental state changing. It changes. If you've got chronic pain, you understand how it affects every aspect of your life. I, like my family and my kids have suffered so much because, yeah. of, you know, it's been so detrimental. 
you know, to my kids and, and family and, and the whole lifestyle, friends, everything, you name it. So, I mean, I can totally see me doing that too. Yeah. Um, you know, chasing people down and it, it, you can't, you can't help it because you just know how extreme of a difference it is. Yeah. You know, and just to be able to, Hey, I just don't, I don't understand. It's been around for so long that I'd never heard of it. Yeah. And everybody I've talked to and my friends and family have never heard of it. So it's like, Really? Are they trying to keep it a secret? Because uh, <laughs> I feel like taking out a full page ad in the paper and going, hey, you know what? If you've got this, I, you know, you should try this. Because yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. I, I know I really kind of redoubled my efforts with the videos that I make and stuff because uh, with the opiate witch hunt going on in the U.S., uh, I quit counting, quite frankly, because it made me sick to my stomach at 15 people I know I, I refer to as knowing them digitally um, you know people I've known like like talking with you or people from my groups I may not know them in real physical life but that doesn't when I started grieving these people is really when it turned the corner for me that you could have a meaningful relationship because if I'm grieving these people that means I had a real and intimate relationship right. Right. so you must be able to do that through technology you know, or I wouldn't be grieving. So that really helped me turn the corner to thinking, you know what, I'm on to something because, again, the, the depression, the isolation, we can network, we can talk. We can't physically maybe leave the house, but we can reach out to one another and, and, and talk. Combined with pe uh, people who killed themselves because they lost their opiates, people who had responsibly used these meds for years well, and they and stripped them away and they it. chose to kill themselves. And that's when I really redoubled my effort to get the word out there that, you know, there are some options. I'm, you know, because uh, I don't know if you've watched on the, on the page, there's the page on Facebook, spinal cord stimulator success stories. Then there's the group on the page. Uh, I, I've been making videos about trying to kind of shepherd people through the process and share stories like I'm going to do with this and Tim uh no actually it was a, a guy named pork chop is his YouTube handle he thought for sure this was quack medicine that it was all bullshit and hooey oh, he said he put it off same guy but I read something and the wife said I my husband was just like could not believe it I don't yeah know he he that. said sounded like quack medicine sound like science fiction sound like bullshit so he put it off six or eight months until finally you know, he, he said he's, he, he's got train tracks behind his house. He was thinking about stepping in front of a train, and he said, you know what? F fuck it, I'll try it. And he said he was so amazed. You know, so I get it. I get the skepticism. I'm not trying to hard sell anybody, but like, like we've both said, if you're at the point where you're looking at this as an option, you probably don't have a hell of a lot to lose by doing a trial. Right, right. Absolutely. So, so now, where are you in the process? So you had your trial, and it went great. And then did you have any real bad complications and stuff from your trial? Nothing. I mean, okay. I find um, the only thing is um, my back is really itchy where, where the wire went in. And I don't know if it's just I'm sensitive, and I, I'm kind of a little bit panicked. Like, is my body not going to like this thing? Because why should it still be at that point? But um, I'm not going to worry about it. They haven't, I think they said first week of September, they'll probably have their schedule out. So I'll have a definitive date. Um, but basically it's just, I mean, I, the last probably few nights has been kind of rough. I have a new symptom that's come up. Um, it's kind of like when your foot falls asleep and that awful feeling when it starts to come back. Mm, the pins and needles. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's, it's not normal pins and needles. It's just like driving mad crazy. And it goes mm -hmm. from my hip right to my toes. And I j it's mad and I haven't slept in a couple of days. And I'm thinking, <laughs> you know, sleep, you realize how important it is. Mm -hmm. I honestly, three nights um, from the trial, I slept through the night and never got up. I think I might have stirred a bit because I rolled over on the wire or whatever. And, you know, I just changed position. But I couldn't, I couldn't believe what it was like to sleep through the night. You yeah. Know? And uh, 
So I'm kind of fighting that now because last night it was, I just couldn't, the sensation was maddening and you think, God, you just want to go to the, 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 the merge and give me something, but it's like, probably anything they give me i've tried everything is not working, right? exactly if it worked you wouldn't be looking at an implant yeah so i mean and then the fact that my mom lives with me she's elderly and i'm her caregiver is is huge it's a huge yeah. brain because there's not a i can lie down and catch up sleep in the day if i want um you know so not only am i having a hard time looking after myself or her as well but um, I'm hoping this new symptom is because I didn't have it before is just, you know, obviously nerve related. So it should be fine. Yeah. Uh, I know Carol, my friend, she's gone back for a few. She's having a bit of trouble with one leg and trying to get the, she's had it reprogrammed. Um, but just, you know, from my own experience, when I went and they changed the program <laughs> to see it off, it went obviously terribly wrong. Um, that it could be changed and you just have to find that. So I hope for her case, um, they are able to tweak it and get better result. Cause I mean, I wouldn't want to have to have it done and then it not work as you know, it did because obviously if it works in the trials, it's got to work for her somehow. Exactly. Exactly. Well, um, I really hope you'll come back and share, uh, whenever you want let me know but yeah as you go through this process uh after yeah, you get absolutely. your implant you know because i think this is going to be invaluable for people who are looking at the process um and considering having this done so um before i let you go is there anything else that we didn't cover that you would like to share or that comes to mind i, I think we've pretty much run the gamut oh yeah we've pretty much covered it all there's nothing i can think of but just that I would stress to people if, if you're really on the fence about it. Um, it's really not as, you know, the procedures you're in and out, you know, less than five hours. Um, it, it's really just a bit of uncomfortableness, but, um, it's, it's definitely worth it if you can, you know, get your life back and your quality of life. And there's, if you're running out of options, you know, give it a try and don't be so fearful of, of, you know, stories that you hear or, you know, there's, with everything you try, there's going to be, you know, a chance of this, a chance of that. But uh, I think for most of us, you're willing to gamble that just to get some kind of quality of life back. So, I mean, for me, um, I'm really, really grateful. I'm grateful that, you know, I just happened to have a friend that had it done that referred me and, you know, I'd spread the word and I'm going to, and I have been, and I'll continue to do it because just because of the simple fact, it is life changing. It really truly is life changing. Um, you know, at one point I figured that this is what it is for me and it's just going to get worse. Degenerative, right? Like how much worse can it get? You know, I don't want to live like this to, Hey, you know, I got my life back. That's really truly what it is. I got my life back. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm always going to advocate try it not that i want to push anybody but you know try it all right well i'm going to stop recording and I, I want to thank you so much for coming on and sharing today and i look forward to talking with you again soon yeah thanks joseph thanks for having me on and uh anytime i share my update and we'll we'll talk hopefully soon all right i really want to thank jen again for being so brave and taking the time to cover so many different topics related to chronic pain if you appreciate these videos and want to thank her, like I said, please type thanks Jen down in the comments or give this a thumbs up. Feel free to follow this page so that you see news stories from other people. And these are my other pages. Feel free to visit or follow them as well. Thanks for watching. Joseph of Borg. I'm out of here.